Hi, I'm Meredith Marr at the University of Maryland Medical Center. We're here today discussing LASIK eye surgery with cornea specialist and refractive surgeon, Dr. Wukas Munir from the University of Maryland Eye Associates. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me, Meredith. And thanks to all of you for watching. We invite you to leave a question for Dr. Munir in the comment section below and be sure to, watch, to like this video if you're watching right now. So let's start off talking about what LASIK eye surgery is. Can you explain the procedure to us? Sure. LASIK surgery is a type of what we call refractive surgery. It's the most common surgery that we do for refractive surgery. Uh, LASIK surgery uh, essentially consists of uh, reshaping the cornea. Uh, the cornea is the front layer of the eye, and so if we can reshape the cornea to bend the light in a way such that it can reduce the need for glasses, then obviously that's beneficial to the patient. So uh, again, the goal is to reshape the cornea with laser uh, to reduce the need for glasses for both distance and near. What conditions does LASIK treat? Uh, so LASIK surgery and, and all forms of refractive surgery can treat any condition that uh, requires glasses or contacts. So any what we call refractive error, meaning that it's a change in the power of the eye that requires you to wear glasses or contacts to correct that. So we can fix that issue or problem by reshaping the cornea. So that means someone who's nearsighted, we call that myopia. We, anyone who's farsighted, we call that uh, hyperopia. Um, and also astigmatism as well. So any sort of the shape of the cornea that's a little irregular or um, has sort of two different curvatures, sort of like a football versus a soccer ball. Mm -hmm. Someone who has astigmatism has a shape more like a football rather than a round soccer ball. So we can correct astigmatism with the laser as well. How long does the procedure take? Uh, the procedure itself, um, the actual laser treatment that we do, um, we do, typically we do both eyes at the same time uh, and we do them sequentially sort of on the same day. Um, each procedure takes between 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and so with the procedure itself, uh, usually around 45 minutes or so to do both, uh, both eyes. Tell us a little bit about the recovery process. Um, how long after the procedure is completed will, mm -hmm. will someone begin to see more clearly? Um, mm -hmm. And is there any need for contact lenses or glasses mm -hmm. after the procedure? Right. So the goal of refractive surgery or LASIK surgery is to reduce the need for glasses or contacts. So um, the procedure itself, uh, on the day of surgery, we have the surgery as we discussed. Um, patients go home the same day from the laser center. Um, we usually uh, expect the patient to have some discomfort for the first few hours. Uh, they'll go home. We recommend they sleep it off. Sleeping with the eyes closed tends to help that re recovery process, helps the healing process. Most patients wake up the next day and are able to see well uh, and oftentimes drive to the examination. Wow. Uh, when they come in for the examination, we review instructions for the next week. So I'll see them the first day. Um, they typically start eye drops for that first week as well. So they're on eye drops from the procedure time until the one week visit. Uh, when I see them at one week, typically uh, the patients are much more comfortable again. They're off the eye drops and the vision is starting to really come in. We see them again at one month and usually at that visit, if it's LASIK surgery, uh, most patients are, are healed enough that the subsequent visit is a year later. So it's usually um, a few hours of discomfort. We say the vision recovers overnight into the first week and um, usually about a month of follow-up time. And do they need any lenses or glasses afterwards? Right, or? so to follow up the second part of the question, right. um, the, we said we reduce the need for glasses or contacts. So again, the objective is to make it so that most patients can function most of their daily activities without glasses or contacts. Um, rarely in sort of extreme circumstances to read maybe fine print. If you're worried about reading glasses, sometimes you might need to use a, a reader for very, very fine print. Or in extreme circumstances for distance vision, um, but again, for most things, we, we say you typically don't need your glass or contacts anymore. That's great. So how effective would you say LASIK is? How long can, does it, is there like a time period that it lasts for? Or mm -hmm. do people see clearly for life after that? Right. So the change in the cornea from refractive surgery is permanent. So most patients, once they've had refractive surgery, if they have a stable correction, which again is the majority of patients, it lasts the rest of their lifetime. Now, it doesn't prevent other problems from happening something called presbyopia, so the need for reading glasses that develops uh, in older age. You still may need that if you've had LASIK surgery earlier on. Um, and other, any other eye problems that may develop, cataracts, et cetera, those things will still develop independently of having the correction, but the actual change in the cornea and the correction is permanent. Uh, there's plenty of data, there's studies out there that look at 10, 15 year data that's looked at procedures that have been done you know, over a decade ago, and the vast majority of those patients do very, very well. Uh, so it is a permanent procedure. So some of the comments we received, a couple people said that they had had LASIK once or twice, or even I think one person said three times. What could be the reasons for why someone would need it, the procedure done again? Right. So having a procedure done again, we call that an enhancement. 
So we enhanced the original procedure. Uh, I think earlier on when LASIK was still uh, coming out a few decades ago, uh, some of the uh, lasers you know, a little less predictable than they are now. Um, also, it goes back to the initial evaluation, which, again, we can touch upon later as well. But that evaluation is really key to make sure that we've, we've captured the full prescription and um, sort of identify those folks that may be at high risk for needing more correction. So some, some of the common things that we see, uh, individuals with high corrections, so a laser does a very good job of treating most corrections, a very high correction, the chance of needing enhancement is a little higher. Um, so those are sort of common situations where you might need a, what we call a touch-up or enhancement. You mentioned the evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, can you just give us a quick, mm -hmm. uh, a brief overview of who is a good candidate for LASIK eye surgery? Sure. So, so LASIK surgery in general is a, is a great procedure for, I'd say, the majority of, of individuals. Uh, there are some conditions, you know, ocular conditions, if you have eye health problems or certain sort of serious medical sort of, or systemic problems, occasionally uh, those may not be good candidates. But for most people, they are good candidates. Um, and the uh, evaluation that we do is a full eye exam. We look at the front of the eye, the cornea in particular, the back of the eye to just assess what is the ocular health, is the, are the eyes healthy. Uh, we also take measurements of the cornea. We w certainly want to know the prescription of the eye, the prescription of the current glasses that the patient's wearing. We do some measurements of the curvature of the cornea, the thickness of the cornea, just a full examination of the cornea and the eye uh, to see if someone's a candidate. And um, let's talk a little bit about the, the um, process of LASIK eye surgery. So you sure. mentioned they come in for a consultation. They come in with you to see you sure. for the consultation, right? Correct. And then you're the one who sees them all the way through the Correct. surgery, the post-op, right. everything. Right. So uh, the way we like to do LASIK surgery, the way I like to do LASIK surgery, I do all my evaluations myself. Um, the patient first comes in. The first key, obviously, is that preoperative evaluation. We want to really see, are the eyes healthy? Are you a good candidate? So we do that evaluation if we assess the eyes and we feel like uh, the patient is a good candidate, we schedule the surgery. As we talked about some of the features of the surgery itself um, and the time that it takes to do the surgery, we do that at the laser center. And then the patient has the follow-up, as we described, you know, usually a day later, a week later, and a month later. Great. So just a, a reminder, if you're tuning in um, with us, we're here with Dr. Wukas Munir discussing LASIK eye surgery. Um, bef before we take some questions from the audience, we're going to do some quick introductions behind the camera. We have Hannah Braun and Hope Gamper from the University of Maryland Medical Center Marketing and Communications Department. So Hope, why don't you uh, tell us what some of the questions are from the audience. Sure. Um, we've got a question from Kathy, and she wants to know... Um, she wears prism glasses for double issues. Would it be appropriate for her to get LASIK? Uh, so again, as we discussed, the preoperative evaluation is very important. So prisms um, uh, are used, as, as, as she's aware, to correct double vision. And there are, there are occasions where we can still do refractive surgery in that situation. Again, it's very much case to case. So I would say uh, oftentimes what we do is we refer to the original uh, uh, physician who takes care of her eyes, who takes care of her prisms, to see if that person would be a candidate. Um, it, it's a tough one to answer without sort of going through all the details of their evaluation. Um, it, it tends to be a little bit more of a difficult case, but certainly something we could assess. Great. Let's take another question. And is the same, um, does the same go for people who have astigmatism? Um, Lindora and Pierre would like to know. Sure. So astigmatism in general is, is correctable by the laser. Uh, there are limits to how much astigmatism. Uh, individuals with very high astigmatism may not be a candidate. But for most individuals who have astigmatism within the first few diopters, we like to, you know, if you look at the actual raw numbers, um, they actually are candidates. So astigmatism in general um, uh, is not a contraindication. Mm -hmm. Great. Hope, do you have another question? Sure. Uh, Marcus asks, is there an age cutoff for LASIK? So uh, in general, the uh, LASIK surgery, there is a, a age uh, cutoff on the lower end. So actually, we won't do laser surgery on anyone typically under 18. I usually wait till about 20 years old. And the reason is, uh, we want to assess stability of the prescription. So uh, individuals who are still growing, teenagers, et cetera, they tend to have eyes that are still changing, still growing, and the prescription can change. So as we described, if we're going to change the shape of the cornea, we want to have a final, we want to sort of know exactly what we're treating. So if the, if the prescription is not stable, we won't exactly know what number to treat. So I actually won't treat anyone under 20 or who has a prescription that's, that's changed within the last year. Um, on the upper limit, there actually is no limit. We, we can certainly do refractive surgery uh, for any age range, um, oftentimes we'll do refractive surgery after someone's had cataract surgery even uh, to try to fine tune their prescription. So it's certainly uh, an open possibility uh, for, for almost any age after they've reached 20. 
Is it possible for um, even folks who may be in their 30s, 40s, 50s for their prescription to change over time? Um, it's unusual for that to happen. Usually there's a reason for that. And so that, again, it goes back to the original assessment uh, to see if there is changing and why it is changing. Uh, but typically with normal growth, it usually stops around the age 20. Okay, great. So if you have questions for Dr. Munir, a reminder to leave them in the comment section below, and we'll hopefully get to those during this live broadcast. Hope let's take another question. Sure. Uh, Nay would like to know, can LASIK be performed on someone with a pituitary tumor and who wears glasses for far distance, which you've kind of answered already. But. Does a pituitary right. tumor affect eyesight at all? Or so possibly? pituitary tumors it, it, a, is a type of tumor that can affect uh, uh, vision, and it affects it through the uh, nerve pathways from the eye to the brain. Um, so it really depends, again, on the type of pituitary tumor, the size of the tumor, there are folks who have what are called microadenomas, which are very small uh, tumors, usually that are picked up only on like an MRI or a CT scan, like an X-ray of the brain, so to speak, um, but otherwise would cause no symptoms. In those cases, in select cases, they could still be a candidate. Um, in other cases where it's a more advanced disease, then maybe not. So again, it goes back to the evaluation, and we would certainly want to talk to the neurologist or neurosurgeon to see if it's something that could be possible for the patient. Great. Another question? Aaron asks, is there a greater chance for retina tears with LASIK? Uh, that's a very good question. It, it's controversial in a sense that there were some initial reports that potentially uh, laser surgery could be associated with retina uh, detachments. Uh, I think the current thinking is that it's probably not associated with retinal detachments. It's still not clear. The literature is not 100% clear on that. Um, I would say that for the most part, uh, laser surgery or LASIK surgery the issue of retina detachment becomes more of a problem when there's a high prescription. So again, it goes back to if the prescription is very high and we're trying to correct a very high prescription, those are patients who are at risk for retinal detachments anyway, and so we'd be more careful in that situation. So uh, it's a good question. Again, we, we want to evaluate what the prescription is and what other risk factors might be present. So one question that um, we've gotten several times is what the cost is of the procedure. Mm -hmm. and. Um, other people wonder why it costs so much, and then you hear other places advertise on the radio, and it's so much less than perhaps a medical center. So can you just go over the difference between sure. um, the laser centers and a medical center and, and the right. cost associated? I think most of the cost actually comes from the technology. Um, earlier on, uh, the lasers were, were what we call broad beam lasers, much simpler technology, and some, some facilities actually still use those simple lasers. And so the cost associated with doing that procedure is much less. Now, the problem with using those lasers is the side effect profile is much, uh, I'd say it's, it's a less favorable sort of side effect profile. There are, much, there are more issues that can uh, result from that. So um, what we do here at the medical center is we use only the latest technology. We use what's called a femtosecond laser, which is a laser that actually creates the flap. And then we use another laser, the eczema laser, uh, what's called a wavefront optimized correction, um, which does the actual correction. So the procedure that we do here is all laser. We only use laser for our procedure. Um, and because of that, to, to achieve those better results and to really use the latest technology, there is a little bit of an extra cost to that. So, you know, certainly costs will vary, and almost invariably that's related to the technology used. And because we use only the latest to make sure that we get the best results, um, you know, we tend to have costs that are higher than what you might see in an advertisement. Uh, does insurance or Medicare or Medicaid, Medicare ever cover the cost of LASIK? Another great question. I've, I've, in my years of practice, I've had one patient who's had insurance pay for it. So typically okay. we say no. Uh, there are some very specific vision plans that may cover LASIK surgery. Mm -hmm. So it's really in your best interest to check with your insurance. Um, and certainly the health spending accounts are another great resource you can, you can typically use. Again, check with your, with your plan. But typically you can use that towards LASIK surgery. So uh, where you may not be able to use insurance per se, you can usually... Again, check with your plan. Usually use your health spending account for that. So you mentioned that we use only the latest technology. Mm -hmm. Can you also go into the importance of seeing a cornea specialist for LASIK surgery versus going to another um, ophthalmologist, eye surgeon? Sure. So I think really it goes back to how we've been sort of emphasizing that preoperative evaluation. I think it's really critical to have an evaluation that's, that's thorough and really goes through all of the different risk factors. So as a cornea specialist, I was trained in LASIK surgery. So I have the expertise to know who is a candidate, who is not a candidate, what are some of the risk factors involved. And I think, uh, I think it's important to, if you have any procedure done, to, to be able to, to see someone who knows the ins and outs of the procedure. Um, so I'm, and there's certainly there are some great 
providers out there that do LASIK surgery. Um, I personally uh, feel that you know, cornea specialists who are you know, trained in refractive surgery uh, have a little bit of, it, they just, just know the procedure better um, in right. that sense. So. Right. Let's take another question from the audience. Sure. Sean wants to know, can you perform LASIK surgery on a person with severe dry eyes and would there be any side effects because of the surgery that might affect his dry eyes? Sure. So dry eye is certainly a very common condition. Uh, and certainly a common condition in the general population, certainly in contact lens wearers in particular, who tend to be refractive surgery candidates who seek out refractive surgery. Uh, dry eye comes in certainly different forms. There can be very mild forms and other severe forms. So severe dry eye in general can be a contraindication to refractive surgery. But again, it goes back to what were the treatments that were used, what were the different um, modalities that the patient has tried to sort of treat their dry eye, are they still wearing their contact lenses? We can certainly promote dry eye. So there are different ways to address that to see if the patient would be able to tolerate refractive surgery um, and still, uh, even if they have underlying dry eye. So uh, again, it's hard to, to have a blanket statement that they wouldn't, would not be a candidate, but certainly it, it doesn't warrant an evaluation. Um, there are certainly folks uh, who have mild dry eye that we've done refractive surgery and have done terrific. Um, refractive surgery in general, I'll just add, does create a... Uh, uh, does sort of lead to dry eye. In a sense, for the first few months after refractive surgery, most patients actually do have dry eye. Most patients usually need to use some teardrops for the first few months, uh, but that typically does resolve over the first few months. Um, so certainly if you have underlying dry eye, it's important, excuse me, it's important to evaluate that to see if that might be a reason not to go forward with surgery. Let's take another question. All right, so kind of in the same vein, a lot of people want to know about their specific conditions. Mm -hmm. um, so Tyriel asks if mm -hmm. she has glaucoma, mm -hmm. um, can she have LASIK surgery done? Uh, glaucoma, again, a great condition, uh, a great question. Uh, glaucoma, again, comes in many forms. Um, folks who are what called glaucoma suspect, individuals who are suspicious for glaucoma, haven't developed actually full-blown glaucoma, uh, can have refractive surgery. Um, Early forms of glaucoma, again, in conjunction with a glaucoma specialist that they see, if they feel that they are a candidate, uh, can still have refractive surgery. Advanced cases of glaucoma, that would be a contraindication. So we call it a relative contraindication. There are conditions, there are, there are stages of glaucoma that can still have refractive surgery. There are advanced stages that cannot. So again, we would work with a glaucoma specialist and the patient to see if it's something that's right for them. What are some of the biggest misconceptions about LASIK? You know, you hear people mm -hmm. ask the question, can I go blind? Or maybe they're fearful to have the surgery. Something terrible will happen to their eyes. What are some of the misconceptions, right. and, and how can you dispel mm -hmm. those myths? Right. So I, I think refractive surgery in general, probably the most common misconception that we get is that most patients think they're not a candidate for whatever reason. Um, as we've seen from some of the questions, certainly everyone, uh, m many people have different types of eye conditions. Uh, again, it's important to remember that eye conditions come in, in severities. And so for most folks who have less severe disease, you know, mild dry eye or what's called a glaucoma suspect or some you know, other of these conditions that may sound like they're scary and may have sort of repercussions that may lead them to not be candidates for surgery, um, many folks have very mild forms which, which can still be candidates for surgery. Um, the surgery itself, you know, the reason that it's such a popular surgery is because it's a very safe procedure. You know, surgery doesn't have risks and certainly... Uh, and we go over that in detail uh, at, the, at the evaluation. Um, but in general, refractive surgery is a great procedure uh, in the right patient uh, when we've over gone over the risks of the procedure. So. Great. Hope, do we have any other questions? Um, we do have one more question. Alicia wants to know, why does Dr. Munir wear glasses if LASIK is so wonderful? So this is a question we get quite often. <laughs> it's a question I actually do get asked quite often in the clinic, and it's a great question. Um, I've actually been evaluated uh, twice, actually. I was that persistent. I wanted to have this done. Uh, but I actually have a few risk factors that actually do increase my risk for surgery. So, uh, again, it goes back to that evaluation. I think it's critical to really talk to the patient, present them with all the risks and benefits of the procedure. Uh, and when I talked to my surgeon at the time, uh, it, we felt that it was higher risk than I was willing to take at the time. So um, I like to lay it all out there. We try to have an open conversation, very transparent. These are the risks of the surgery. These are the benefits. Um, if it's right for you, uh, I certainly think it's a great procedure and, and patients do really wonderfully if it's in the right population. So. If you have additional questions for Dr. Munir, please leave them in the, qu the comment section below this video and we'll get back to you within 48 hours with an answer. Um, just a reminder, we're discussing LASIK eye surgery with Dr. Mm -hmm. Wukas Munir from University of Maryland Eye Associates. 
So for those of um, our viewers who still have questions about LASIK or concerns, what do you suggest for the next steps? Uh, the next step is, again, come in for the evaluation. Uh, we have a refractive coordinator. Her name is Crystal. She can be reached at 410-363-8043. Uh, schedule an evaluation. We'll go through all the testing. We'll go through your eye examination and see if you're a candidate. And we can certainly talk about any other questions at that visit as well. And it's important to note, too, that the evaluation is free of charge, right? There's no copay That's involved. That's correct. So refractive surgery, for the evaluation, we offer that free of charge. We do the full evaluation, discuss all the pros and cons together, uh, and there's no charge for that. And how many locations do we offer for the LASIK consultation? Uh, I do my evaluations uh, in Baltimore at our Redwood Clinic and also at, um, in Columbia at our Waterloo location. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching, all of you. This is all the time we have today. But again, please leave your questions for Dr. Munir in the comments section below, and we'll get back to you in 48 hours. Thank you.